Oh, after two years and a few months, give or take, I'm free. It's time to catch a rerun of the Golden Girls. But first, some business. All right, you little man. Where are my element? Oh, my. Ah, oh, look. I know Air Neo's got shot in the head 36 times by the Italian airline copyright squad, but you have to let go. There's nothing you could have done. Fusionist. How come it had lower stats than one of its materials? What? And then Musician King. Lady of Faith? Witch of the Black Forest? Dave? Sabo? Oh, fusion monsters. Listen, it was the Middle Ages. Nobody cares. Now let's get to work. Sandwich. Sangan? Witch? Sandwich. And I see the Sangan, but where's the witch? And there's certainly no sandwich. Or you have a sandwich here if you're hungry or something. Great mammoth of gold fine. A golden mammoth. Two materials, no mammoth. All right, all right. Clearly, traditional fusion is out of the question today. How about we just do masked heroes? Those are real simple. Sure, I'll leave you some masked heroes. All right, tip top. I'll be off then. There's a can of expired crystal Pepsi waiting for me. Wait, what are you looking so smug about? Oh, you stupid fuck. At this point, it's probably not surprising that one of my favorite things oh. to analyze in Yu-Gi-Oh! is the way the playstyle of a deck reflects the team it's based on. I touched upon this in quite a few videos, noting that even though integrating an archetype's aesthetics into its card effects is a valiant effort, it definitely shouldn't be done at the expense of its playability. Fucking spy gal, Misty, I still can't believe this shit. However, from time to time we get lucky, and Konami actually delivers on this front, releasing an archetype with an ideal blend of team and playstyle, with my favorite example being Super Quantums. To call them inspired by Super Sentai slash Power Rangers would be a strong understatement, because the word inspired implies a degree of separation between the source material and the new product. When you have color-coded superheroes that pilot giant animals and use them to combine into a super robot while being supported by a quirky marketable meme beast, you've shot way past the inspiration zone and landed right in the bootleg area. And it's perfect. Sorry if you came in here hoping for me to tear this deck a new asshole or something, but I'm afraid I hold a bit too much admiration for Super Quantums to be overly negative in this review. Just wait for the Ally of Justice support, you insatiable vultures. The Red Ranger of the group is the level 5 Fire Warrior, Super Quantum Red Layer. He's got 2000 attack and 800 defense, and if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one Super Quant card in your graveyard, add it to your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Super Quantum Monster in your graveyard, except Super Quantum Red Layer, special summon it, but it cannot activate its effects. Feeding for the leader, he shows up and provides recovery for his teammates. It's a pretty basic swarming effect, which gave the card a bit of utility in generic rank 5 focus decks, and in Super Quantums it works about as well as it should. The unsummon effect restores your hand because this card material is very important for this deck, while the floating helps to maintain field presence and is usually triggered by a detached or the aforementioned discard. Negating the effects of the restored monster is not a big deal because it's usually just meant as Xyz or Link material. The most confusing part of the card is really the super quant distinction. It's the most awkward segment of the archetype's name they could have possibly chosen to represent the whole thing, second only to the Predaplant umbrella being the horrible sounding Predap. On the other hand, the super quantum naming etymology is already enough of a multilingual punch at show without me throwing a wrench into the works, so let's just leave it alone. Much like most Red Rangers, other than the select few crazy people, Red Layer is simply perfectly fine. Moving on to the green, we have the level 4 Wind Spellcaster Super Quantum Green Layer. He's got 1600 attack and 1400 defense, and when this card is normal or special summoned, you can special summon one super quant monster from your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can discard one super quant card, draw one card. You can only use each effect of super quantum green layer once per turn. It's their simplest monster, but it's fast and gets the job done. With its own abilities, it's able to trigger either the on summon or the discard effects of any of the layers, while providing both field presence and draw power. It's not a primary combo piece, but it fits nicely with the deck's playstyle. Unlike Jason David Frank, you won't have to use the green ranger until the end of time in a desperate attempt to stay relevant. Their level 3 is the water psychic type, Super Quantum Blue Layer. She's got 1200 attack and 2000 defense, and when this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Super Quant card from your deck to your hand except Super Quantum Blue Layer. If this card is sent to the graveyard,
graveyard, you can target up to 3 super quant cards in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck. You can only use each effect of super quantum blue layer once per turn. Clearly the brains of the group, blue provides an easy on summon search effect for any card in the archetype, as well as monster refresh on floating. It's also a level 3 psychic, which makes it a great target for emergency teleport. I'd be lying if I said I didn't wish the second effect did something else, because a deck shuffle doesn't have a lot of use in an archetype that rarely goes into a grind game, but the first effect is good enough to make the card a 3 off. However, I will say, one thing that slightly bothers me is the way the rangers don't have much of a unifying theme in their visual design. There's some triangles here and there, including the background, some kind of golden shoulder plating, and their helmets imply an animal-based squadron, but their suits all look like they came from different teams. The stuff that really stands out is that red is decked out with claw weapons, green's got a pair of capes, and blue has plastic hair and boob armor. Wait, are you girl? <sighs> Even a super varied Sentai team like Q-Ranger at least had a star motif to tie the designs together, so the lack of consistency in the suits is the only real complaint I have against the way Super Quantums look. These are very cool characters, I just wish it was easier for me to believe they came from the same group. No, Zenkaiser doesn't count, because he's deliberately going for non-human suit forms, and god only knows what this is going for. The final main deck monster in the original lineup is Super Quantal Fairy Elfin. It's a level 1 light fairy with 0 attack and defense, and once per turn, you can target one Super Quant monster you control, all face-up monsters you currently control become that monster's level. You can tribute this card, reveal 3 super quant monsters with different names from your deck, your opponent randomly picks one for you to special summon to your field, and you send the rest to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of super quantal fairy elfin once per turn. While it's already more useful than most of them, a big plus for elfin is that you don't have to listen to it talk, unlike all the other franchise mandated funky crinkle blungo toodle pops. The level equalizer effect is nothing special, because your XC's options are just fine without it, so it's mostly just used in a pinch. The real winner here is the pantheism effect, because while the selection is random, all the layers have on summon and floating effects that help you with setup, so tributing Elfin usually kickstarts your plays pretty hard. If you summon Red Layer, you get recovery from his effect, as well as graveyard setup and draw power from green in the graveyard. If you summon green, you get swarming both from him and red in the graveyard, and if you summon blue, you get searching from her effect, as well as swarming and setup from red and green. Due to being a level 1 fairy, it's also incredibly easy to put on the field with stuff like 1 for 1, Piri Rice Map, or Diviner of the Heralds and Trios Hierarchia. This team could not have gotten a better navigator. Now they just need an archetypal bright and Cranston. Just see where did you put the messy? Naturally, a Sentai team wouldn't be much without giant robots, thanks to the Emissary of Hell, Spider-Man! This is a true fact, look it up. And so we have their initial trio of XC's machine monsters, the Super Quantal Mech Beasts. The Fire Rank 5 Magna Liger with 2600 attack and 2000 defense, the Wind Rank 4 Aeroboros with 2200 attack and 2400 defense, and the Water Rank 3 Grampals with 1800 attack and 2800 defense. Or as I like to call it, Aero Shark Assault Mode. They're all generic, meaning they only require two monsters of the same level as they rank to summon, and they share the following effects. This card cannot attack unless it has Xyz material, and once per turn, you can attach a super quantum monster from your hand or field to this card's material. In addition to that, they all have detach effects which you can use on either player's turn if one of their Xyz materials is a ranger of the corresponding color. Magna Liger lets you detach one to target and destroy a monster on the field, with it being a quick effect if it has red layer's material, Aeroboros detaches one to target a monster and turn it face down with green layer for the quick effect, and Grandpulse lets you detach one to target and destroy a spell or trap card on the field with its quick effect material being blue layer. I'll be upfront here, this is probably the best possible way they could have implemented the concept of Zord pilots into the card game. They are nearly useless if there's nobody inside to drive, they work acceptably if there's someone at the wheel, and they achieve their full potential if the appropriate ranger is in control. These are all solid interruption effects too, posing a potentially nasty board to the opponent if you control several, and since none of these effects are hard ones per turns, multiples of the same beast can also put in decent work depending on the situation. You can also recover the materials in case you plan to keep using the mech beast instead of flinking them away into Megaclops, which is the second best monster you could summon by using them. See, those default summoning conditions don't mean much. You could use two level 4s to go into Aeroboros, and it's probably a better way to go in some cases, however, the intended way to do it is with a field spell, Super Quantal Mech Ship Magna Carrier. Its effects are the following. Discard one card, then target one Super Quantal monster you control, special summon from your exodeck, one Super Quantal Mech Beast Xyz monster with the same attribute as that monster you control by using this material. This is treated as an Xyz summon. You can send this card from the fields onto the graveyard, then target 3 Super Quantal Mech Beast Xyz monsters with different names you control and or in your graveyard, special summon 1 Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus from your exodeck, and if you do, attach the targeted monsters and their materials to it as material. I don't think much elaboration is required here. It gives a thematic shortcut to all your Xyz and triggers the layer's floating effects by doing so. The discard cost also makes it very easy to run dangers in the deck, which help out with field presence and making Xyz. Basically a typical Arc 5 era field spell, meaning it's crucial enough to make you want to hack off 
off a limb to search it. But clearly the standout effect here is the second one, tributing the card lets you essentially fuse your three mech beasts into the ultimate Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus. This is a rank 12 with 3600 attack and 3200 defense and the following effects. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon 3 Super Quantal Mech Beast Xyz monsters with different names from your graveyard. This card gains these effects based on the number of materials with different names attached to it. Two or more. Once per turn, during either player's main phase, you can detach one material from this card, shuffle one card on the field into the deck. Four or more. This card is unaffected by card effects except Super Quant cards, and six or more. Your opponent cannot add cards from the deck to the hand by card effects. And ten or more, it bombs their house or something. Something? Jesus Christ! I will say, this is where they temporarily stopped giving a shit about making tokusatsu accurate effects and instead just opted for the most violently oppressive array of abilities possible. Quick non-targeting spinning is already the strongest form of removal in the game save for tributing, complete effect immunity was at least to be expected but is still a pain in the ass to deal with, and as if all of this wasn't enough, it prevents the opponent from searching or drawing, which is so thematically out of place for the card that it feels like it got into the effect by mistake. Oh wait, I think I know what's going on here. Any potential playstyle variety this deck could have had is simply swept away in favor of crapping out this ridiculous behemoth and turning the archetype into another tower's turbo deal. And still I can't help but love it. It's a big shiny megazord that's harder to get rid of than a kidney stone and has floating on top of everything else, so even if they do get rid of it, chances are you'll just go into megaclops next turn. As somebody who thinks the only morally correct way to use Dragoon is as a drink coaster, I know I have no business praising this unapologetically bullheaded car design, but I'm gonna do it anyway because wow, cool robot. See, Zeus didn't learn this! You can summon Zeus atop a fucking cat shark! You can't do that with Magnus! Well, you can with this, but we don't talk about it. The mandatory cool Season 2 Extra Ranger eventually came in the form of Super Quantum White Layer. It's a level 7 light fairy with 2400 attack and defense, and you can send one non light Super Quant monster from your hand or face up hill to the graveyard to special summon this card from your hand in defense position. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can send one Super Quant monster from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, this card's attribute and level become the same as that monster's. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Super Quantal Fairy Elfin from your deck or graveyard to your hand. You can only use each effect of Super Quantum White Layer once per turn. Okay, so a light fairy that searches Elfin. Did they coincidentally get a ranger of the same species as Elfin, or does it just expand into that suit Kiba Ranger style? One of life's many questions. White layer is good. The summoning condition is solid for, by now, obvious reasons, although the non-light distinction can make it a bit of a brick sometimes. The unsummon effect is a nice shortcut to layers you can't immediately access, along with triggering their floating effects, and the Elfin search in the graveyard is neat, but it's mostly just used to refill your hand for the discard. Not really the usual super fancy auxiliary ranger, that seals the show, but it's a perfectly fine monster for the deck. And of course, he comes with his own Dragon Zord, the Rank 7 Super Quantal Mech Beast Luster Rex. It's got 2700 attack and 1900 defense, the usual Mech Beast effects, and you can detach a material to target a face up monster and negate its effects until the end of the turn, this being a quick effect if the card has white layers material. Well, this is pretty standard. It might as well have been printed in the same pack as the originals and it wouldn't have made much of a difference. It's certainly one of these Super Quantal Mech Beasts. A little more interesting is their final monster and seemingly alternative Megazord, Neo Super Quantal Mech King Blaster Magna. <laughs> It's a link tree with 2500 attack, all arrows pointing down, requires two or more monsters, including a super quant monster, and has the following effects. This link summon card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Each time a super quant exceeds monster with a different name from the cards you control is special summoned from the exodeck to a zone discard points to, draw one card. If a face up exceeds monster discard points to is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one super quant monster from your deck with the same original attribute as one of those destroyed exceeds monsters. You can only use this effect of blah 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 who gives a shit my name is way too long once per turn. If it wasn't painfully obvious by now, yes, this is a band-aid from the middle of the Link era because the archetype was shot in the kneecaps by Master Rule 4. Was it useful back then? Not much. But now, it's even worse. While it's true that you get draw power as long as you can keep summoning mech beasts, it usually comes at the expense of not being able to make Magnus at all unless you get the perfect setup and run into zero interruption. Best case scenario, what you get is just an extra body over Magnus with a recovery effect that most likely won't go off before Blaster Magna itself is destroyed. A few years back this was a staple due to Link rules, but now it's only really a choice for decks not primarily focusing on Magnus and instead maintaining field presence with mech beasts. A somewhat inferior playstyle if you ask me, considering that Seryuja is an equally good option most of the time, but I'm trying to salvage what I can here. For what's ostensibly supposed to be an Ultra Zord, I wish this was printed like a year later, so they could have actually made it an alternate boss monster instead of glorified Link era training wheels. Moving on to the back row, we have the normal spell Super Quantal Elfin Spike. More like 
have a ball. <laughs> you know, if you miss, Elfin is just dead. If you control three or more super quantum monsters with different names, shuffle as many cards your opponent controls as possible into the deck, then your opponent special summons one monster from their extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. You can banish this card and one super quantal fairy Elfin from your graveyard, activate one super quantal mech ship magna carrier from your deck. From the perspective of emulating the Sentai trope of ground level squad finisher leading into a giant robot fight, this is a 10 out of 10. From a card design perspective, it's a 10 out of 100. Okay, it's not that bad. I mean, the field clearing effect is great, but until you have three different rangers on the field, the card might as well be a sleeve full of sawdust. Letting the opponent summon literally anything from their extra deck for free sounds like a terrible idea, but it heavily depends on the format and the deck you're playing against. On one hand, it could be a monster which is usually a game ender, but in this situation, just a harmless body with no quick effect or protection. While on the other hand, it could be this. Feel free to make that gamble if you want, but I think it's just a little too unsafe to be ran consistently. I appreciate the creativity here, but the end product is just a little fumbled. Kinda like this. Their last spell card is the quick play Super Quantal Elfin Call Appeal. If a Super Quant monster you control is destroyed by battle, special summon one Super Quantal Mech Beast Exceeds monster from your extra deck, then you can special summon one Super Quantal monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard that is specifically listed on that Exceeds monster in its text, but negate its effects. You can only activate one Super Quantal Elfin Call Appeal per turn. Well, the intention here is that a cool new ranger swoops in to protect the team and save the day, but it's more like he stumbles drunkenly onto the battlefield and passes out while trying to get into the Zord. If this had any other activation condition, I would have given it some slack because the effect itself is fine. Putting a mech beast in a layer on the field at the same time is cool, but only triggering upon battle destruction really screws everything up. You either have to rely on the opponent running over a super quant you control, which basically turns the two monsters you summon into clay pigeons for them to shoot down, or crash into one of their monsters on your turn, which is not an embarrassment you should be forced to endure for basic setup unless you're playing pajamas. The weirdest thing is that a card doesn't let you attach the summon layer to the mech beast's material, cause that would have made for some okay interruption on the opponent's turn, but now I'm just trying to fix a card they didn't try to make good in the first place. Don't play this. The first of their two traps is Super Quantal Mech Sword Magna Slayer. It's a normal trap that says, target one Super Quant Xyz monster you control, equip this card to it. It gains attack equal to its rank times 100, and it inflicts piercing damage. During your battle phase, you can send this equip card to the graveyard, the monster that was equipped with this card can make three attacks during each battle phase this turn. As a representation of a finisher attack, this is wonderful, or it would be if it wasn't a trap. What monster's attack are you gonna be intercepting, fucking Gate Guardian? I know a spell that gives triple attacking to some fairly easy to summon Xyz monsters might be a little too wacky to print, but you could have kept that part of the effect exclusive to Magnus and made the card slightly more playable. It's a janky win more card, which I guess is ideal for what it's referencing, but it's not very good in a deck that prefers on the spot playmakers. I put a win more card in my deck, but now I'm winning less? How could this be happening to me? The final Super Quantum card is the continuous trap, Super Quantal Union Magna Formation. Your opponent cannot target Super Quant cards on the field with card effects during your main phase 1. You can target one Super Quant Xyz monster you control, attach one other face up monster you control to it as material. You you can only use this effect of Super Quantal Union Magna Formation once per turn. Once again, lovely adaptation of a mecha trope into a card effect, this time it being the practice of enemies not interrupting a robot forming sequence out of courtesy. Sadly, it doesn't make the card itself much better. It's another trap for no good reason, with the first effect not being good enough for something that needs to lay down a turn before activating, and the second one doing something most of the archetype just does by itself. If your Magnus has less than 6 materials and the mistake effect staying up is a matter of life and death, sure, go for it. Otherwise, don't bother. Additional minus points for being the card that made me realize Elfin doesn't have a cute smiling face, but is actually all nose, no mouth. I'm sorry to have put this in your brain, especially after the Buster Blader shoe revelation. You decide which one's worse. Time for the mighty grading Power Rangers. Their consistency is okay. Most of the time you can make at least one mech beast with your opening hand, and going into Magnus is surprisingly easy with all the searching you have access to. The deck doesn't deal too well with hand traps, and if you don't get a field spell on time it's usually a scoop, but otherwise most of your hands are just fine. A decent tree. The power output is also solid. The mech beasts have good attack values in addition to some removal effects, and Great Magnus is... Great Magnus. 36 under attack is not the peak of the game, but it's still pretty beefy, and the quick play spinning effect is ridiculous. On the other hand it's still all on one monster, and the mech beasts themselves don't don't bring much OTK potential, so I'd say this is another strong tree. The recovery is a bit hard to grade, because it's one of those decks that uses a lot of its recovery primarily as play extension. All of the layers offer some kind of restoration upon floating, either on the field or in the hand or deck, and Magnus leaves three mech beasts behind if it somehow gets ran over, so there's definitely enough here to border on a tree. Even though coming back full force after mass removal rarely happens, I am very biased, so I'm gonna ignore that border and give it a 3. <laughs> in terms of protection, most of the deck is a 1, other than Magnus, which is a 5. It's doing 
doing a lot of heavy lifting to bump this up to a 2. It's kinda like how I decrease Montenegro's national average height just by existing, but in reverse. The versatility is honestly also mostly carried by Magnus. If you can make it on turn 1, you completely shut down a bunch of decks from their searching ability, along with being able to spin back anything they do manage to put on the field. Not to put down the Mech Beast either though, because quick removal, flipping and negation can definitely slow down a lot of plays if timed correctly. There's barely any build variety here, as the archetype has been in stasis for a while now in terms of support, but the stuff you can do with it can still deal with a decent amount of decks. Magnus itself is a 5, but overall it's one final solid 3. Here's a decklist! No, it's not in Macedul. I can barely afford the gems to feed my Luna Lights, let alone invest in a Super Quantum deck, leave me alone. Adjust for OCG balance to your liking. If you couldn't tell, which is understandable given my constantly petulant tone, I love this archetype. Which is funny because it's got a lot of things in it I'm generally not a fan of. The excessive focus on the extra deck, the ham-fisted Link Monster, a general feeling of linearity, but at the same time what it does is woven into its theming skillfully enough for me to constantly appreciate, due to myself always having been a fan of Power Rangers. You could definitely expand the archetype with additional rangers and zords while improving it with cards based around even more sentai imagery. A henshin sequence, rescuing civilians, the ranger HQ, a duel against the rival, maybe a big bad, and throw in an insector crossover in there for good measure, cause why the hell not. The point is, I'm well aware of just how annoying this archetype can be to play against sometimes, but in the end, it's a faithful adaptation of a series very dear to me, which only accentuates the best parts of the deck's design in my eyes. So even if it stays the way it is for good, I'm perfectly okay with what we have. As long as you've got this card fodder, it's always morphin time. Dang it, if I had known that slushy was alive, I wouldn't have tried to drink it. Okay, yeah, uh, this should be the place. I hope I'm not late. What do you mean he dismantled a lightning storm? <laughs> yes, I, I heard you, but why would he do that for a set of Dustins? That's probably forbidden by some convention. Well, if it isn't red layer. You know, I used to have a red layer on my armpit once. They said it's bad, but it made a lot of delicious fungus to snack on, so who's laughing now? I'm uh, sorry. Apology accepted. Ah, feels good to meet a fellow reasonable talker. Not like those code talkers. All they do is, uh, quote unquote, eject me from the data room because I, quote unquote, like how cables taste. What is this? Are you the new guy? Oh, green layer. You're looking a little desaturated today. That's fine though, it happens to me too. Especially at the beach. Because they push me into the dirt. Okay, shut up. Who are you? Why are you here? Wait, is this not the Super Quantum meet and greet? Super what? This is the Master Duel garbage disposal. We pick up the player's card trash and recycle it into crafting points. We haven't been able to get any work since Zexel. Nobody even knows what a Super Defense robot is anymore. I thought we were getting support when you walked in, but you somehow look worse than any garbage I've seen all month. How did you even get here? This place is off the grid. Aren't, aren't you holding a map? Oh, this? This is just to help me remember how many limbs I should have in case one of them goes missing. I just wish I knew how to count. Anyway, as long as I'm here, is there any way I can help? I make a really good mop. I can uh, squeegee your windows? Can uh, throw me into things to clog them? Well, we do need someone to pilot uh, that thing. Since Elephant is apparently off to find a meaning in life. If he finds it, I hope he brings it back here. Uh... Yeah, I'm qualified. I crashed a decoy roid one whole time. I'll give it a shot. This is the one time that things are gonna go right for Ojama Line. I don't know how to parallel park. I'm, try I'm trying to put this thing in reverse. You didn't have your turn signal on. Could, could anyone tell me where a gas station is?